Okay, so the next topic would be on simple strain. So I think I have given you the um, the PDF file for this one, but let's try to again understand each concept um, on each slide. But at least diligenting on uh, you're on your own in understanding this topic, so especially with the examples. Okay, so what is what is a strain? So for example, you have to imagine a certain rod. So for example, this is your rod. And let's apply a certain amount of force P at each end. Or so let's say at this end lang siguro. <clears throat> then let's say the other one is fixed siguro na fix. Okay, so in our last topic, we understood the effect of stress, diba? So stress is the force over a given area, whether it's normal stress, shear stress, or actual stress. So of course, during um, stress, there would be some deformation that is going to happen in your material. And that is what we call as strain, okay? So for example, the rod um, elongated by 10 millimeters. So this one is not a strain, but this is the deformation or the deflection, or let's say the elongation na, na distance. Strain, however, is the deformation over the original length. So usually, um, if you read the item on the lower left, so if the deformation is 10 millimeters and it's divided by the 10 meter length of the rod, so the result would be one millimeter per meter. So meaning the behavior of your deformation is one millimeter per meter of the material, which is the rod. So this one millimeter per meter is what we call as the strain. Initially, strain is represented as this E parameter. So I, I'm, I'm not really sure how to read this particular um, Greek letter, epsilon, or I, I, I'm not sure. And this one is the deflection or the deformation. So <clears throat> the deformation could be any type. It could be um, shrinking. It could be expansion. It could be deflection, bending, uh, deflect all over the length, original length. So I think this one is the small letter delta or the lowercase delta. So for this one, just try to research the Greek letters, but probably this one is lowercase also. Don't, I'm, not, I'm not really sure if what lowercase it is, but it's, uh, as we all know, all the the letters in mathematical terms are all in Greek, di ba? coming from the Greek. So, mga theta, mga, mga delta. Na. So, all coming from the Greek letters. Lowercase, lower most likely lowercase. If not uppercase, probably just a few. Okay, so that's how we understand strain. It's the deformation all over the original length. Okay, so if you compare three different items, so for example, the first one is the bar having no load. So of course, we can expect that there will be no deformation, right? In the second one is we have a certain P load introduced in your bar. So we can expect that there's there would be a certain amount of deformation or let's say elongation in this case since the force is in tension, right? So usually in um, strain or the deformation aspect, if it's compression, it's shrinking, right? If it's tension, it's expanding, it's elongating. So also we can expect in the third bar, so as we try to increase the load, meaning the deformation also increases. So we can say that the deformation is directly proportional with the stress. 
or the strain is directly proportional with the stress. With the, with, um, with the stress. So that's what, uh, that's what we can see here on the right side of the figure, this chart here, or this line graph here. So on the x-axis, you have the strain. On the y-axis, you have the stress. So of course, with increasing force, we can expect increasing stress. We can also expect increasing strain or deformation. Okay, so Next is the stress strain diagram of a mild steel. So this is just an illustration on how the different points or the behavior of the material works. So first is um, we have the proportional limit. So this is the straight line. So proportional limit. So as what is seen here, by the definition of the proportional limit. So it is the portion of the stress strain diagram from point O or from the starting point zero. So point O going towards that particular endpoint proportional limit is the this line here. So how can we define this in a in easy manner? So we can say that the proportional limit is just the behavior of the stress and strain of the material. So if you have a high stress, it will give a high strain also. So that's so that's why it's proportion, right? proportional limit. It's directly proportional. So next is we have the elastic limit. So up so beyond the proportional limit, if you try to deform your material even further, up until the elastic limit. So if you try to release the force, so that force will eventually um, make the material go back to its original position. Or let's say Marag, the deformation is not permanent. Right? So if you try or if you try to imagine ng mga kwan, sa may mga rubbery material. So let's say kanang kwan siguro. Uh, kanay mga tagatisi man dyan mo, diba? So, uh, I'm not sure if I tried it poke. So if you tried Korean food, katong, um, rice cake, or let's say aglugan lang siguro na aglugan. Okay, maram na aglugan ng tupoki. So if you try to stretch the aglugan, katong balas aglugan, katong glue stick rather, glue stick dai. So if you try to expand the glue stick, so at a certain force, na uh, diligent siya super dako nga force, and then you try to release that force, so it will still go back to its original position. So that's how the elastic limit is defined. So maragna pa certain force wherein, um, if you try to exert force wherein it creates a deformation, but when you release the force, the deformation will be gone. Marag mabalik rasya sa original position yeah. meaning the deformation is not permanent. That's what you define as the elastic limit. So of course, beyond the elastic limit, the deformation will be permanent, na, di ba? Okay, mo siya yung limit. Okay. Okay, so in the Hooke's law, stress is proportional to strain. So going back to the proportional limit, that's why it's the proportional limit. That's how we call it. So. In terms of um, strain, in actual strain, we have what we call as the modulus of elasticity. Okay. So usually the modulus of elasticity is already given in the problem and it will be varying um, with different types of materials. So some steel may have 200 megapascal, um, other materials will give you a 400 to 500 megapascal uh, modulus of elasticity. So depending on the 
type of material being presented in the problem. So usually once we try to solve for the modulus of elasticity, we can just have or simply have the situation. Stress is equal to um, the strain all over the stress. But again, usually the E is given in the problem or the modulus of elasticity is given in the problem. Okay, so elastic limit, so again, beyond the elastic limit, so again, as what I have told you earlier, the material will not will not go back to its original length or its to its original uh, formation. Okay, so again, beyond the elastic limit, if you have still um an 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 force, and then the deformation will be permanent. So this is what we call as the permanent set. So of course, um, these terms are not really important, but as long as you understand these terms, so probably mas pakasabot mo sa higher subjects such as reinforced concrete and reinforced steel. Uh, steel design, uh, steel design rather. Okay, so yield point is where there is an appreciable elongation or, or yielding of the material without any corresponding increase of the load. So meaning there is still elongation despite there's no load added anymore in your um, material. So nagsigi siya deform even though that the load is now constant. Okay. <clears throat> so this is the phrase here. So an appreciable elongation or yielding of the material without any corresponding increase of the load. So that's the highlight of this particular point. So ultimate strength is the strength of the material. Of or the highest usable stress of the material. So most likely in design subjects, this is what we normally try to calculate, the ultimate strength or the ultimate stress of the material. So rupture strength on the other hand is the stress at the failure. So of course, um, if you try to understand materials or let's say if you try to imagine things, um, highest point ang so let's so let's say the steel can have its ultimate strength at this point diba? so at some point even though if you are still increasing the load up until its failure point so the ultimate strength will decrease because um the, the stress is now declining because the strain is increasing diba? so what I, it shows po, diba, sa inyong chart. So meaning, if you have a high strain, so look at the particular stress you're going to have. It's smaller, diba? So meaning, the material may be now malleable or super kanang easily deformed and it causes just less stress for it to deform. So muna siya, there's a decline in the graph here, diba? So probably at, from the yield point, if you still keep on adding stress, so um, the material still deforms, but not enough to for it to decline in the stress, diba? Or the capability of the material to absorb stress. So up until the ultimate strength, then after the ultimate strength, if the material is now super deformed, so it it keeps on receiving stress, but not uh, not the same stress as the ultimate strength. Mana mo decline siya up until its failure point. So some materials have a rupture strength wherein it's higher than the ultimate strength, meaning you have to exert more force for it to break. 
other materials decline in stress for it to break. So, imagine mo, di ba? So, if we just imagine a piece of bread, for example, na amoy kanang kuan, na amoy French bread, di ba katanggahi kaya bread, and then compare it with a soft bread. Na. Then, i-experiment ninyo kung saan kuan, behavior sa iyang failure type, di ba? So, one will exceed super strong na force, the other one would simply have a low stress or force for it to fail. So that's how you define the different points in an easy manner. Para dilikin mo maglibog sa mga terms na present sa engineering books, di ba? So here we have a comparative diagram of the stress strain curves of common materials. So as you can see, or as you can probably um, Analyze. So high stress, meaning again, uh, it differs from materials. So despite having high stress, the strain of the high carbon is very low. So for cast iron, um, mid range mid range stress, then high strain, or deformation. Same for aluminum, which is Mostly, most of the materials being sold in the market. Tabi na sa atong mga kwan, mga materials. So, concrete also, high stress, uh, low stress, but super high strain. So, that's how you're going to understand the terms of the different materials. Okay, so for a while, lah, kay nai ni tawag sa telephone. Okay, so going back to the discussion, so sorry for that one. Okay, so um we have the yield point determination by offset. So if a material does not have a well-defined yield point, so we can try to draw a line an offset of 0.2% for us to be able to determine its yield strength or yield point. So most likely if the behavior during testing, so that's why the, the phrase here is the, if the material does not, does not have a well-defined yield point, so of course the yield point can only be determined through testing. So next would be the calculation of axial deformation. So in formula, we're going to use the Hooke's law from the previous slide, which is, again, most likely the modulus of elastic elasticity is already given, which is E. Okay. So usually, this is how we present our equation for the Hooke's law going towards the deformation formula. Okay, so um, if you're not really interested in the in the tawagan ako ng yahang pag derive sa yahang equation. So just try to memorize this equation. So try to understand that the deformation is equal to PL over AE. So P being the force, being the actual load. L is the length of the member. A is the cross-sectional area where it where the load was applied. So usually it's perpendicular to, to the load. So again, it's the area is perpendicular to the load. So the same as stress because we are in axial deformation. So usually again, modulus of elasticity is given. And then the length 
is also given. So again, try to recall that the forces that we're going to have. So if megapascal, so it could be one times 10 to the power of six Newton per meter squared, or it could be Newton per mm squared. So these are just the same thing. So again, it's easy for us to express our forces or our stresses in the, the megapascal format and also to express our dimensions in millimeters because I think we can um, appreciate the deformations in little amounts. Right? Okay, if you're going to convert it into meters, so for example, you're going to have 0.5 meter, uh, 0.005 meter uh, deformation. So imagine, but if you're going to say five millimeter uh, deformation, so I think it would be better right? for us to imagine uh, ah, five millimeters. Right? Ninyo sa, sa inyo hang kwan, sa inyo hang ruler ang five millimeters compared sa 0 0.005 meters, diba? So unless you go to that your deformation is in meters, which is really impossible, uh, it's possible, but most likely the behavior of materials uh, in minute deformation always. So for example, if steel, di ba, diba, nga, mo deform siya o six meters, diba? But the deformation is in millimeters usually. So it could be that maabot siya o couple of centimeters but meter siguro probably possible if you're going to put it at its limit up until up until its failure point say rupture strength diba? okay so limitations of this formula so the load must be actual so that's one rule the other one should be the cross sectional area should be constant all throughout so meaning if you have an area of different sizes, so what you need to do is just to um, segment those parts and try to determine the, the deformation per, um, per dimension, diba? So kasabotana is, for example, kato ato ang example sa axial stress, diba? Katong, na, katong mga different bars. So for example, bronze, aluminum, and then steel. So if you're going to have three different sections, so you're going to compute for the deformation of each of the cross sections. So meaning you're going to have deformation for the first one, second deformation for aluminum, deformation for the third, which is for the steel. So that's how you're going to do it. If the cross-sectional area is not constant all throughout. So you have to cut it in parts. Okay, so next is the, the stress is within the proportional limit. So we're not going beyond the proportional limit, but we are just in between the proportional limit and a line. <clears throat> so most likely um, the proportional limit the elastic point usually is within the proportional limit because again, Morag, um, we just tend to overextend the force in the proportional limit for us to determine if kaya pa niya mabalik siyang original shape or form. But most likely the, most likely ang end points in your proportional limit is already the elastic point. Okay, again, beyond that, Elastic point is magdinad siya pidi ma palik siyang or siyang original na form di ba or siyang shape. So we also have the shearing deformation, which is the shear strain. Uh, let's go back to the previous slide, eh? So in our board exam, so we have the shortcut. So we call this as the plague formula, plague. Na. We'll just multiply this one, plague. Na. 
So, marsyag plague, di ba? Na plague. But wrong spelling lang. At least you can remember the formula better. Then for the shearing strain is um, the shearing strain, as you notice, as a different type of format. So it's still the same as the formula for the axial deformation. Again, the general formula for stress is force over area, diba? Right? And the stress would it, the stress that you're going to look for will depend on the force and on the area of application. So whether it's axial stress or normal stress or shear stress, diba? Right? The area is parallel to the force. Whether it's bearing stress, the the other material is affecting the stress in the situation. Punching stress, ana, diba? Thin old vessels ka stress, ana. So if shear stress, diba? Marag, same gap siya, force over area, but you're going to have tau lang siguro, diba? So if you notice here that it's the same formula, but V here is just, so the V here is P in the previous formula, but ilalang V para ma-emphasize na it's shear force. But pwede na good V, good as long as you know that it's the force in the parallel in the uh, par parallel against the area. Ano lang siya pagkasabuta. And then notice that the area, A sub S, is the shearing area. Diba? So, mura rin siya ka ng, kuan, ka ng same formula as before. But, wag nausab lang ang mga variables. Nalay sub S. And then, especially for this one, diba? Okay? So, actual deformation with respect to shear. And then, Shear force, the V. So shearing area, again, that would be parallel to the shear force. That's what we have learned from our topic of simple stress. So shear should be parallel against the area or parallel with the area. And then normal stress is perpendicular towards the area. So in, um, so in shear stress, Instead of having modulus of elasticity, so we're going to have modulus of rigidity. So marag mo na siya ang lahi sa inyong shear and axial strain. So if you're going to make a shortcut for this formula, so probably this is the most rampant thing that any 21st century or mga uh, new generation kids. So, mga vloggers, mas lang, mga vloggers. Na, vlogs. Sana. Or pwede rin siya sa vlog, di ba? As long as you know that it's for the shear. So, you can just take away the S for, for the sake of simplicity and then create it as a vlog. So you have vlog, plague. So PL, PL equals AEG, AE delta rather. This one is a vlog, VL equals AEG, and then the deformation, delta, so vlog. Okay. So I think we can now solve some problems. So let's try to solve this one first. So I think so again this one is already presented in the PDF that I have given you, but I'm still going to discuss this one for you to be able to understand it even better. So the figure shows a rigid bar ABC hinge at A. So if hinge, meaning that's a pin support, meaning you're going to have two types of reaction, the horizontal and 
the vertical component. But at this time, we don't know yet its direction since we're still going to solve it, diba? So statics, I'm going back to statics to solve the reaction forces. So it's supported by a steel rod. So this one is steel rod at P. And then a load of 75 kilonewton is applied at C. So this is the load at C, 75 kilonewton. Okay, so determine the vertical movement of the point C due to the applied load. So first of all is that how we're going to determine the deflection. So if you're going to um, imagine the deflection, so since this one is going downwards or in tension, so most probably the material will bend, diba? It will go towards this direction, Marana siya. So meaning point B will also deflect, diba? So let's try to, to verify if it's really going this manner. So take note that if the force is in tension, usually it's elongating. Okay. And then compression, we're going to have um, compression, diba? so meaning mo shrink. Shrinkage. Diba? So, maraming mo magduot mo clay, good, diba? If you imagine a clay, if you try to compress it, it's going to shrink, diba? If you try to elongate it or apply tension, it's going to expand. Na. Na. Expand or shrink. Na. Other terms for um, um, tension and compression. So if B is attention, so it is verified that B will be in tension or in elongation, hang deflection, diba? So how to verify that one is we're going to take moments about A for us to eliminate the two forces is equal to zero. Okay, so let's try to solve this one. So let's assume that this one is in tension. So again, tension is away from the joint. Away from joint. So that's why it's elongation, right? Towards the joint. Or towards the point of application. So if it's towards, diba right? Shrinkage. Shrink siya. Mugamay siya, di ba? So let's say that counterclockwise is positive. So th um, this would be um, moment at B or the force at B times 2 meters. So it's positive, di ba? It's rotating counterclockwise. And then the other one is minus. It's rotating clockwise, diba? That would be 75 times 5 is equal to 0. So solving for B, we're going to have no. 187.5, sir. Okay, so 187.5. So thank you, Steve. And then this would be in kilonewtons. So notice that our answer is in positive. So meaning our assumption is correct, which is going upwards. So again, even though this is going upwards, okay, since it's in tension, so meaning it is in elongation. So, medyo, so, medyo, so medyo, medyo mo na siya glibog, di ba? Kay, if, it's the, if it's the intention, so probably the material will be going up, di ba? So again, um, this is just the counteraction of the force at 
point P. So it tends to counteract the force at um, at point uh, on the other forces, di ba? Okay, mo na siya ang behavior sa material. So again, since our equation is in equilibrium, dapat equal to zero tanan. So dapat, there's no movement dapat, di ba? But again, for the sake of understanding the strain concept, so we tend to move the material using equilibrium equations. Nasya. So diba, if you think of it, since it's equal to zero, diba? so the three equilibrium forces, summation of forces, horizontal is equal to zero, summation of forces, vertical is equal to zero, summation of moments at any point is equal to zero. Diba? So if it's equal to zero, so probably there is no movement. Diba? Okay, all, all, all are in equilibrium. So meaning there are no extra forces being exerted sa inyong material. Okay, so again, for the sake that we're going to understand this one, so we try to tend to use temporarily the, the concept of um, equilibrium forces for us to be able to appreciate that it will create a particular kind of strain or stress, diba? Okay, so since we know that um, the force Fp is 187.5 kilonewtons. So determine the vert so next is determine the vertical movement of point C due to the applied load. So with this is we still don't know how to approach this one, but since we have the formula, katong plague, diba? But in my case, I just go with PL over AE. Uh, play, uh, play. Anasha play. Okay. <clears throat> so once you have the equation, so what I, I think the next step would be just direct substitution, diba? PL over AE. And then, of course, para must dali ang atong pag-understand is um, what force are we going to use? So I think that's the next question. So of course, we're not going to use um, the C uh, the C uh, force because again, as the limitations being presented earlier by actual deformation, the force must be perpendicular to the area, di ba? Yeah, kanisha is dimensional perpendicular sa area. Perpendicular sa area, but on this side, diba? And that's not what we are looking for, uh, deflection. So, there is a point B, we can see that the material is being attached to a steel rod. So, and then the, then the force is perpendicular pa sa yung area. So, meaning, we can utilize this force. We can, we can determine the deflection at this point. And then probably use some ratio and proportion later on for us to be able to determine the deflection at point C. Okay. So deflection at point B is equal to PL over AE. So again, it could be play, it could be plague, depending on how you're going to memorize the formula. So this one is 187.5. So again, in my case, I want to to utilize the millimeters na kuan. So I'm going to make everything in Newton per millimeters. So meaning megapascal is equal to kilonewton per millimeter. So meaning my force should be in Newton, my dimension should be in millimeters. So for the force times 1000 for it to become Newtons, so 187,500 Newtons. Diba? So, so let's try to write the Newton word. So length, so it's four meters. So instead of four meters, I'm going to write 4,000 millimeters. 
na para newton per millimeter siya. So divided by by the area that would be 320 millimeter squared. Na para if if gana mo assure yung answer, just write na lang the units per variable. And then 200. So again, megapascal would give me newton per millimeter. So instead of 200 gigapascal, I'm going to make this 200,000 megapascal. Diba? So newton per millimeter squared, megapascal, megapascal. So cancel each other out. What is left is millimeters. So anaran asya. So let's try to answer this one. 11.72 millimeters, sir. So 11.72, no? Yes, sir. So 11.72 millimeters. So most likely in actual practice, we try to approximate this one into 12 millimeters. Okay, I think um, we cannot see the point 72 sa kwan ba sa ruler but in most cases since it's going so the technology is becoming um, advanced so we can accept the 11.72 because i think there are instruments that can measure as the 0.72 in the millimeters so siya. but you may also do um kaning pag convert into a whole number if you want to so I'll accept it, but probably some other instructors but in this lamp accept. Okay, so next is we're going to create a ratio and proportion. So again, if you try to draw a triangle, so pasensya na kayo sa drawing. Ah. So let's say this is point A, then this is point B, then this is point C. Then let's say this is the deflection. So let's say this is delta B and delta C. So two meters, three meters, then the deflection is 11.72. So by ratio proportion, we can say that the deflection at B all over the length, which is two meters. So let's say it's 2000 millimeters is equal to the deflection at C all over 5,000 millimeters. So of course it's 5,000 because um, it's coming from A, di ba? So di ba, mag proportion to sa triangle, it's hold the whole side against a specific smaller side. Then the shorter leg against the longer leg. That's how we do ratio proportion sa triangle, di ba? So given that we have 11.72 millimeters all over 2,000 millimeters, so we have delta C and then 5,000 millimeters. So again, para yung maglibog, just try to write the units nandiyan para assure you din yung answer. So I think that's what we do in high school, di ba? We try to put some, go on, put some ng units sa ito ang mga variables para dito maglipog in the cancelling out of the terms. Okay, so for this one, what would be the answer? 29.3, sir, millimeters. So that's 29.3 millimeters. Okay. So again, if we try to recap what we have discussed, so what we did first was to look for the force at P and determine whether the material would be elongating or shrinking, right? depending on the, the force direction. So again, if it's in tension, it's elongating. If it's in compression, it's shrinking. Okay, so since we have verified that the force is elongating, uh, is in tension, so meaning that the force is, or that the bar will elongate or will deflect, 
So this shall shrink the bar. So again, we did not use the force at C because again, the limits of the actual deformation, we need to follow the limits of actual deformation as presented in the previous slide. So we tend to use the material wherein there would be a legit or a correct amount of deflection would happen. So, and this would happen at the steel bar since the conditions meet in this particular area. So the force is perpendicular to the area, and then the material will elongate. So again, after determining the elongation at B, so we try to get the elongation at C or the deflection of the bar by using ratio and proportion. So Munasha for this example. So any questions or clarifications so far? And so far, sir. Okay, so no questions. So let's try to proceed with the next example. So this would be the Kwande, the one presented in the PDF. So it's um kisol na chadid to sa PDF. So 11.72, and then we try to um, get the the deflection at C using ratio and proportion. Okay, so again, um, despite the direction of the forces, so try not to get confused on how you tend to understand the behavior of the strain. So again, para mas delicia, I think in simpler terms, if it's in tension, that would be expanding, diba? If it's in compression, that would be shrinking. Compressing, diba? Compression, compress. So I think better na ang term sa compression, di ba? Because you have the root word compress. But for tension, probably that's, you have to look for another synonym for it for you to be able to understand the, go on, the behavior of the tension material. Okay. So next is we try to solve this um, rigid bar AB. So it's supported by the cable BC. And then the diameter of the cable is 16 millimeters. So if you try to write the problem here, so this one is 16 millimeter squared. So usually in diameter, magmuna siya ang usually ang kon ang ang representation for the diameter. So usually once you go to higher um, design subjects such as reinforced concrete, so if you're going to see this term here, this um it means that you are referring to the diameter of the steel or the rebar. Okay, so modulus of elasticity, that would be the E. So notice that the E is always given in the problem. 200 gigapascal. So calculate the movement of B, knowing that P is equal to 15 kilonewtons. So calculate the vertical movement. So try to take note of this vertical movement of B. So we have here 15 kilonewton for the force. So if we're trying to solve this one using statics, so for us to be able to make an, equi an equilibrium, 
equation. So we try to oppose the force here, di ba? So for example, we take moments at A, summation moments at A. So kanisha, may mo siyang tension, di ba? Because we try to oppose the downward force. So this should be upward. So it's in tension. So meaning the member is elongating or expanding, di ba? So probably the behavior of this one would be inanagyapon siya, going downwards. And let's say this would be the steel, di ba? Kuna siya ang iyahang amount of deflection that you're going to look for. So again, the direction of the forces won't matter because once it's defined as tension, it's always elongating. So I'll go. So I'm going to repeat this always para ma instill sa inyong minds na tension is always elongating. Compression is always shrinking. Regardless of the direction of the force, so again, ang directions of force will come into play in equilibrium equations na. na dili sa dili sa behavior sa material. So I think mo na siyang pinaka ultimate definition yun. So the purpose of the directions is just for the equilibrium equations. Para kibata on say upward, on say downward. Okay, para on say upward that would be positive notation. If it's downward, that would be negative, diba? If it's left, it's negative. If it's right, positive. Counterclockwise, positive. Clockwise, negative. Anak. That's the purpose of the directions of the forces. But if it's description, so try to understand it in its description, not sa directions of forces. Okay? So the first thing that we need to do is to solve for the tension at cable B. So since this will be resolved into two forces, but we're going to resolve this one into the vertical and its horizontal component. Okay, para kibauta. So force BC y direction force bc x direction and then this one would be force bc the diagonal portion so of course we know by fact that this is a triangle we can i we can use ratio and proportion so this is 6 4 so if we try to get the different parts here. So 6, 4 divisible by 2. So we can try to narrow it down further para delegate yung dako value. Becomes 2 and 3. Diba? And this is square root of 13. Okay, so I think it's the same gap on so if you try to use four and six this would become two square root of thirteen Not much like two diba okay times two man siya. so sixteen squared plus thirty six squared will give you one gap on diba a large amount of number which will lead you to two square root of thirteen so instead of using a lot uh, a huge number so try to narrow it down as much as possible Okay, so again, we try to sum up forces. So if we try to take moments at A is equal to zero. So again, counterclockwise is positive. Now, so always try to write the positive notation of the direction of the moment. So if, it, so if it's 
coincide if it's summation of forces vertical. So try to ano, plus positive then upwards. Ano, para kibawa nga ang upwards is positive de. Pero marag okay. Pero marag kwa naman na siya good. Normal naman na siya nga going up is always positive. Di ba? Okay, so taking moments at A, so we can say that force BC can be neglected because it's collinear towards A. There's no distance being displaced. For force BCY, I think we can have this um, moment here because it creates a perpendicular moment, diba? Nasha moment arm, which is six. So, ang atua is we just try to represent. F, B, C, Y as B, C para automatic na tanga B, C, di ba? Okay, again, we are interested in the deformation of the cable. And again, as per the actual deformation na limitations, the force should be perpendicular towards the area. And force B, C is the one being perpendicular to the 16 millimeter diameter of the cable. So for us to do this is we try to, so again, using the right triangle that we have created. So three, two, and then square root of 13. So for example, this is our force BC. So force BCX, then force BCY, okay? So using ratio and proportion, we can um, same side, diba? same side, or you can use same triangle first, and then um, ang ayat bang is the same component. So for example, FBC all over FBCX, or let's say Y rather. Okay, mo na tong pangitaon, diba? is equal to, again, ang atbang niya is square root of 13, di ba? Ang atbang sa FBCY is 2. So, square root of 13 over 2. Okay, so, we can say that FBCY is equal to um, 2 over square root of 13, di ba? So, pili siya 2 over square root of 13 times FBC. So, pili na siya, Anna. So, probably we, we're not, we are not required to do rationalization or try to eliminate the radical expression in the denominator since this is not a purely a math subject. But, um, again, um, since we are solving for the force, so pili ra siya diha sa inyo ang denominator ang square root of 13. Okay, we're not strict on that matter kay dilimata pure math subject, but we are not simplifying um, math equations. Okay, so summation moments at A. So we can say that at P it's rotating clockwise, so this would give us negative. And then at B, FPCY is rotating counterclockwise, which would give us a positive value. So FBCY times six meters, and then minus uh, P, which is 15 kilonewtons, times four is equal to zero. So again, FBCY is, we can try to plug this value here. So instead of FBCY, it now becomes 2 over square root of 13 FBC times 6 and minus 15 times 4 is equal to 0. And then, of course, using shift solve, since we have the power of the calculator, we can solve FBC.
which is equal to five square root of 13, sir. So five square root of 13. So I hope that you're not just reading the Kwana, the PDF. So five that eighteen point zero three, sir. Ah. Huh? That eighteen point zero three. Ang yung numerical value no eighteen point zero three. Yes, sir. Okay, so once we have F B C, so we can now um solve for the deflection of the cable. So deflection at B C. So again, P L over A E. Okay, so this would give us the force. So we could use five square root of 13. So again, instead of kilonewtons, I'm going to use newtons, so times 1,000. Then the length of the cable is, um, that would be two square root of 13, right? Okay, six, four, then this should be 2 square root of 13 meters. So para may mo siyang millimeters times 1,000. Okay, the area is 16 mm. Diameter is 16 mm. So since we are still given the diameter, we're going to use, um, so again, diameter, so meaning it's a circle. So we're going to use the formula for the area of the circle. So pi d squared over 4. So pi and then 16 squared all over four. And then lastly is the modulus of elasticity. So again, this is mm squared. This is, um, so again, it's newton on newton, and then this one is millimeters. Then times, 200 megapascal. So again, megapascal is Newton per mm squared. So cancel this one out. What's left is millimeters. So you're going to have the deflection at PC equal to 3.23, sir. 3.23 millimeters. So again, um, the force is in tension, diba? so meaning it's elongating. So there's an extension on the cable towards this direction. So let's say when you new points and you point B, and this is the deflection that it has created, which is 3.23. So meaning your material is nina siya, diba? It extends here towards that direction. So not totally extend, but Masinya ni deflect lang at this point, diba? So, kana siya is it's just an exaggeration of the figure. But of course, it's not totally an extent siya. We extend po na yung hang bar AB, diba? So, probably ni, ni deflect ay yung hang bar AB, then ang extension sa yung hang cable BC da is towards this location da, so bus sa uh, point B. So, it may be in that manner. But again, for the sake that we can just solve the deflection at B, so, mana siya atong button. Okay, so for us to be able to solve the deflection at B, so we need to, again, try to understand. So let's try to erase some. Okay, so we So again, the deflection is towards this location, diba? So let's say this is the deflection at point P, vertical uh, deflection. And this is the deflection of the cable, PC. So of course, creating a right triangle, we can utilize the ratio and proportion method for us to be able to solve the deflection at B. So again, this is just an exaggeration of the drawing. So, diligent siya na nakadako ng deflection, but of course, 
for the sake that we can clearly see the the triangle. So muna siya, ato siyang on, di ba? Okay, so this one is the right triangle. This is opposite the uh, meaning the, the the rather the deflection at P is the hypotenuse. So again, using the right triangle earlier. So square root of 13, 2, and then 3. And then you are going to have here um, so many shots. So hypotenuse is is one. And then this would be the shorter leg, diba, which is deflection at PC. Okay. So using ratio and proportion, so we can simply have it as um, the deflection at P all over deflection at BC is equal to so on sama na ako an. so 2 square root of 13 that's the hypotenuse or square root of 13 all over the shorter side diba? so that will be the square root of 13 so again the same side diba? Ang yung atbang, all over 2 the same side, shorter side so meaning the deflection at B is this one here, diba? Multiplied by the deflection at PC. So moving towards here, so paranate space. So deflection at P is equal to um, 3.23 times square root of 13 all over 2. So that would be the deflection at P. And pila siya in millimeters. Five point eighty two, sir. So it's so it's five point eighty two millimeters. Now disconnect, huh? So that's five point eighty two millimeters. You are choppy, sir. Ah, choppy. Magmi gawas magot sa akong screen nga stable internet. I don't know why, but I'm laptop, I'm not laptop. Kaya mga internet sa balay, kaya kung man good 100 Mbps niya. I don't understand why lag pa dyan Okay, so probably mulago kay my uncle is watching a lot of Netflix. Okay, so that's, so again, recap is you try to solve first the uh, the force of the, of the or the force of the members in the given um, problem. Next is we try to again. We, you have to take note that the limitations of actual deformation is that the actual deformation only happens if the force is perpendicular towards the area. So again, try to go back to the previous slide we're in can see the three limitations of the actual deformation and try to apply that one in the problem in the problems that you're going to uh, be encountering so muna siya inyong i-remind or inyong i try to recall as much as possible so only again deformation will happen if you have the right conditions or you meet the conditions being asked by the actual deformation. So I think the most important one is that the force should always be perpendicular towards the area. So secondly is, I think you have to be mindful again that the direction of the forces won't matter, won't, won't matter or won't describe the behavior of the strain of the material. So whether it's going upwards or going downwards, going left, going right, if you try to define that particular force, diba? so again, if it's in tension, if it's elongating, if it's in compression, it's shrinking or compressing. Diba? So that's what you have to always remember in this particular topic. All right, so this is the solution.
then again, this is the process being resolved. So of course you don't have to look for the reaction forces of A and uh, uh, reaction forces at A, K. It won't really matter in determining the the strain in or the deformation in point B. So unless you go to your in statics, right? when you're going to look for the whole um, reaction forces because that's what we did or what's what you did in statics. So again, for the sake of able to determine the deformation at B, so we have to overextend the line, diba? Exaggerate lang siguro gamay that is going towards this portion, but tili siya pa doon diha, diba? So it may be that muna siya inyo hang deflection, diba? Let's say this is the, let's say the deformation is in this manner, this would be the, the 3.232, diba? And then, muna siya inyo hang deflection nga, Five point something, diba? So a triangle gap on siya, diba? Five point eighty-two. So a triangle gap on yama create, but again, I think it's much simpler if we try to kuan. So again, um, ang yung right triangle will depend on the kuan, diba? The bar. So probably this is the. 5.82, but kwansya hypotenuse siya, di ba? So try, um, just try to recreate a problem on your own later on para you have a better understanding. Okay, so it's almost 10 or 13, I mean, happy now. So let's try to solve more problems. Okay, so let's try this one. So I think we are pretty familiar with this problem going back to simple stress. So we have, so this is what I told you earlier that if you are going to have a non-homogeneous material, you're going to um, be solving the effects of the strain at the three different materials, okay? <clears throat> So determine the maximum value of P if the change in the length of the bar is limited to two millimeters and the working stress prescribed in the table are not exceeded. Okay, so let's try to solve this one. So again, as per the the lesson that we have discussed previously, is a simple stress. So we're going to be looking at internal stresses, diba? So let's say from left to right. So if you have here three p. So of course we're going to have three p in the opposite direction. So take note that that as you go along internally. Try to define also the behavior of the material. So since it's going towards each other, so this is in compression, right? So meaning there's shrinkage. So next is you go towards the aluminum. So since challenge is drawing, okay, mura na baguhan ko ani ng subject yun. And must listen to the drawing sa kwan sa drawing tablet. So if this one is P, if this one is three P, so three P, then another P going towards the left. So we can say that the force at P is internal compression gap on Shariva. 
So this will give us 2P in balance, di ba? So again, compression. Alright. <clears throat> so last but not the least is we have the steel part. So this one is 4P. Then you have P here. And then you have 3P going towards the right. So 5P towards the left, 3P towards the right. So we can say that for balance to be achieved, this should be 2P. So again, since it's away from the material, this should be in tension. So meaning we can say that the bronze material is shrinking, right? Shrink, then this one is shrink. This one is elongate. So usually if we try to understand shrinking materials, it will have a negative effect on the material, right? So meaning minus, meaning the total length will be reducted. Minus, diba? Elongate is the distance or the length of the material compared with the original has been added, diba? So I think that's how you want to understand this problem. So, diba? If you try to shrink an, an, a material from its original length, the final length would be smaller than compared to its original length. If it's elongation, so meaning the the length has expanded, diba? it's been added due to elongation. So I think it's the same as your um, surveying. So I think upon surveying, no? So I think in surveying, there's a, a term called tape correction due to heat or due to temperature. Ana. Okay, mag mix, mix, mag... Anami, ana, sir. Ah, wala pa mana, no? Mana, sir. Ah, mana, mana, ah. Mana, di mana, dahi. Pero sa lab na lang wala oh, namang lab, sir. Oh, laboratory na yung wala dahi. So probably this summer. Wala pang may lab sir. Oh. So probably this summer mag, mag laboratory na mo. Okay. Level 1 naman ang, kwan, ang level sa Cebu. So hopefully you can have your laboratory. Okay. Basin mang graduating na mo din. Wala pa mo yung laboratory ba? Di ba? <clears throat> Okay, so if we try to go back to the problem, so it is ex uh, it is expressed that the bar is limited to two millimeters. So meaning the length of the bar, which is the bar in totality, the whole bar, not only a specific segment of the bar, but the total bar is only limited to two millimeters of deformation. Okay, and it's asking for the maximum value of P if you're only limited to two millimeters na deflection. So what we need to do here is, of course, using the formula of atong PL over AE, atong plague or the play formula. Okay, so since we have three materials, we're going to do it in this manner. So total deflection is equal to the deformation of um, the bronze material plus the deformation of the, rather the aluminum material plus the deformation of the steel material. So again, since we are looking for the total deformation, we also need to apply the, the signages of the different descriptions of your forces. So bronze and aluminum, since it's shrinking, so again, it is creating a shortening effect, right? So it's minus, it's minus, right? Minus, minus, and then plus. So in short, if you try to recreate again the formula, so total deflection, this is PL over AE 
of the bronze. So minus rather, minus PL over AE of the aluminum plus PL over AE of the steel. So that's how you're going to do it. And of course, if you try to apply now the different variables of your individual material, so the first force coming from the bronze material is 3P, right? 3P. So now it's stable as a gono. So this is 3P. And then the length should be 0.6. So um, times 1,000. So this would give us 600. Six hundred, but no, no, six hundred millimeters. So all over. So let's try to make this clean, lah. So three P, and then the area is four hundred fifty millimeters squared. And multiplied by the E, which is 100, uh, it's rather 83. So 83,000 megapascal. Okay, so probably you're going to ask what's the use of the different stress of the materials? So if you go back to the question, the working stress prescribed are not to be exceeded. So of course, we're, we're, we're still going to verify whether or not um, sakto ang atong nakuha ang material, di ba? Uh, let's say the force. Dapat di siya mixed seed. If you try to plug in the force now, let's say we have solved P, di ba? So dapat di siya go beyond the given stresses. But as of, but as of the moment, we are still looking for P. Okay, so minus. So this one is minus. So let's try to create a bracket. So next is 2P. So 2P. And then the area is, or rather the length is one meter, so this is 1,000 millimeters, all over four, uh, 600 millimeters squared, rather. And then we have 70,000 megapascal. So expect that your force is in newtons, okay? We are using newton and millimeters. And lastly is plus. So this would give us 2P still. So 2P and then this, the length is 800 millimeters all over 300 mm squared and then 200,000 megapascal. So of course the total length on the other side should be um, two millimeters, diba? Okay, parang gawa sa answer is in newtons. So probably you try to shift solve this one. For you to be able to get P. So medyo taas kayo siya nga plug in sa calculator, but let's try. Negative values, yes, sir. Negative values, yeah. Negative twenty-eight was in a say you check negative twenty-eight thousand nine hundred twenty-four point sixty-six. Never answer, well, I should answer no. Eh. So you let me try some calculator.
Kaya usually mo na siya ang problem later on when you try to solve a larger number of equations. Para sa'yo mo give up ang calculator. So let me try to solve it first. Huh? Okay, what's in negative judiciary? So meaning if the force is negative, so our assumption earlier was wrong. Negative judiciary, negative 28.92. Kilonewton. 800 and then. But then, if. But it's. The answer is negative 28. 924.6566 Newtons, di ba? Anas, ya? Yes, sir. Hmm. Ano kanino? Sige, let's go na. Okay, kanin siya. Wala ba niya siya yung solusyon? Let me try to get the PDF. Nakaget mo sa PDF ng book, kaning Pytel and Kusalas. Wala sir. Pero nagsend ka to sir. Wala ko magsend pero. Mag-send lang siguro kayo, pero mura man yung ka ng kuhan. It might be a crime kay Ako rin siyang gikuhan ba? Di download illegally. Pero try to look. And ako lang siguro yung chat ninyo and then try to... Okay, okay, okay sir. Basta kay Tumay-damay <laughs> naman. Kani? Na, makitaan nyo di ha? Dagan kay libro niya, pwede bisagun sa libro. Masa as long as it's available in the website. Type pangan sa book, sir. Pwede itype ko um, sir. Thank mechanics you. of materials. Mechanics of materials by Andrew Pytel and John Q. Salas. So probably, I think ang um, sa kaning website kay dagan siya ng libro not only books pertaining to education but also kanang mga fictional books na if kanang mga self help na books pasada kaya mga libro niya in PDF format as long as it's available ang siguro kay probably ang ilang mga versions or editions na available is not the current edition na the one is offering right now di ba sa mechanics of kanang kwan Mechanics of materials. So, ako sa tanaw ng kwa na. So, probably, kutubi siguro ta direct kay hapit na time. And then, muna siya mag tapok yung sunod klase. At least, magpahaway ko mga 10 minutes siguro kay sakit ng tilaukan. Mga tanaw na. Pero sakto na itong ibuhat. Hmm. 
probably siguro ang question sa problem is kuwang siguro. Ito lang i-kuha, no? Mag-experiment ulit ito. Mm, okay. So, what I did was I made the the deflection negative. Ano siya? So, it gave me a positive value of 28,000. So, probably the problem is kanang stating that the shrinkage is well defined, good, diba? If you try to read the problem, it's not really well defined that that uh, somebody limited to 2 millimeters and someone in shrinkage or in expansion, diba? So, it's not really mentioned in the problem. So if it's in shrinkage, so probably we can say that the that the deformation is negative, diba? Okay, it's shrinking. But if it's positive, nga, if it's elongation, that would be positive deformation, diba? So probably if the problem, so I'll try to look at this problem again. If it's kuang siguro ang pagtype ane, okay, may judo ka ano ni So just try to so. If negative, siya, so that would be so this would give us positive value. So probably if you want to try to create it in kilonewtons, so we at twenty-eight point ninety-two kilonewtons. So that would be the force, and then try to verify next the different con. So if it's Greater than the working stress, diba? So force over area, and then is equal to 120 megapascal. Na, mura gini verify if sakto yung answer. So sub bronze is 3p, so 3 times 28.920 newtons, diba? Divided by 450 millimeters squared. And then against 120 megapascal. So what will I try in Sakabuka? So 3 times 28920 divided by 450. So it's 192, diba? So it's 192 megapascal, which is greater than 120. So meaning, dapat dili siya pwede, di ba? So dapat it should be lesser. So try to verify also the other one. So probably if, so upon verification, so um, dapat ang P ninyo will only limit to that particular material. Okay. Dapat pang agad mo sa one material okay, para Dili mo break ang ubang material, di ba? So for example, sa aluminum, that's 2P, so 2 times 28, 920, all over, let's say, 600, against 80 megapascal. So 2 times 28, 90, and 28, 920, divided by 600. So it's 96 Dako, no? Still greater. So how about for steel? Let's say two eight ninety. Probably if type niyatong answer kay probably na wrong dude. Okay, 192 Sige lang. So I'll try to um, examine this problem again. Probably I missed something out. But I think that's the the overall um, topic for 
um, simple strain, actually loaded strain. So for shear strain, I'll try to expound that one next meeting this Thursday. So we're going to discuss Poisson's ratio. So I think if you don't have any more questions, so I think that- I, I have a question, oh, sir. Okay, sir. So, uh, okay. um, the council is asking about this, sir. Um, when do you mag conduct a midterm exam, sir? Probably once okay, next I, week, naman, sir. Um, once, siguro, once, I, week. once I discuss all the topics for midterms, ano lang siguro? Ah, okay, sir. So, dili pa next week, sir. Dili pa. I think probably Sir Thank Alex you, sir. will have his exam na. Kay mo to akong gi pag chat mo is ningon siya nga. Basin probably at the end of the month mag midterm exam na siya. But for sa ako siguro, basin di pa siguro kay medyo layo pa tas tinood. Hinihinay lang, hinihinay kay para di kita mabukuan mong listen. Thank you, sir. Sige. So, any other questions? Okay. So, I think if there is no more questions, so I think that would be it for today. And um, see you again on Thursday for our next discussion. So, we'll try to meet every meeting para at least kuan maka catch up ta somehow okay sige thank you